So this video is going to show you how to use the circular pattern um, and the revolve feature to make a brake rotor that looks similar to this. Um, let's start by first of all looking at this drawing. So here's the front view of the rotor. Looks pretty confusing. And here is a section view. So what this is, is, is almost like drawing a line right through this part and cutting it on that line and then you're looking inside of it and anywhere where there's the hatched lines means there's material there. Um, what we're most concerned with is the overall um, shape of where the hatched area is. Don't worry about um, these little other features such as the holes and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to actually put this in a split view so that we can see the entire drawing at once while we're making it in on shape. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to pick the front plane, sketch on that. And now, uh, like I like to say to you, draw your construction line first, write down the origin plane. Oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you first was make sure your workspace units are in millimeters right here by clicking the, th you click the three lines and go to workspace units. Okay, so let me get out of there, get back into my sketch. All I have drawn here is a line. Um, and then, just like I always tell you, just start drawing roughly. Um, you can see that my mouse is roughly saying this is around 150 millimeters, which is about right for the radius of this, so that you can see in this drawing over here that the diameter is 304. So our radius is somewhere around 150. Um, and now I'm just going to draw the rough shape of this part in here. And it just looks something like this. And I guess I should not have come from the origin, so I'm going to just trim that part right there. All right, and now this is the part I really wanted to show you. To dimension them by diameter, since that's what I'm giving you, you can see right here is giving me a radius. If I come to the other side of my construction line, and it has to be a construction line, that's how you get it to be a diameter. And since everything on this drawing was given to you in diameters, it would be much easier to not have to convert them to such. And I had that way smaller than it needed to be. And when that happens, it's easy to lose track of what you're looking at, but I'm going to just keep going. And now that looks a little better. Um, and again, we may not catch every single feature that's on this drawing, such as this notch here. You can go back and lay, do that later. I think there's a little chamfer down here too. We'll catch that later as well. Um, let's say this wall thickness here is seven. Seven there means, um, you can see on the other side here, it's 32 tall. And then you can fill in the rest of these numbers on your own. Um, I don't want to take up the entire video trying to just create a sketch. So now let's revolve this part. Um, remember, click the faces to revolve. The revolve axis is going to be our center line that we drew. And there we go. There's our rough uh, shape of the brake rotor. Now what we want to do is let's put these these features in here, um, that's actually to allow some of the heat to escape when your brakes are being applied on the car. Um, and it comes out through here. So basically, I'm going to draw it. It's not exactly the way it looks in real life, but we're just going to do it so that it's simpler. So basically what we want to do is create a sketch. I'm going to show you this from the side view. We want to come seven millimeters down from this edge so that we can then cut that out here. Um, in fact, maybe it would help if I showed you what this looks like. So if you look, do you see how you can see right through that rotor? Um, and there are little uh, features coming through. So that's what we want to do. In fact, why don't I show you a section view? There, you can see that's what it looks like. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this area in here. I'll draw that cut it away, and then we'll circular pattern it. But coming back to the one you're working on, I'm going to click on this plane button. That allows us to create a plane. You need it to be an offset plane. We're offsetting it from here. 
and we need it to go down. And I want it only to be seven millimeters down. And so now you can see I have this plane right here. It's seven millimeters down. If I give a section view and tell it to pick plane one as a section view, you can see that it's actually cut the top off of our brake rotor. And that's why you see these lines are hatched. So now I'm going to sketch on plane one, the one that we just created. And all I'm going to do is use the line tool, come up here. Um, if I hit the L tool or L key again, I'll get the line tool back. I want that one to be vertical. Um, but right now, all my sketch has is two lines. I'm also going to use the use tool, which allows it to project geometry or sketch features up to the current sketch. So if you look at my actual sketch right now, it's hard to see, but you can see there's a black line here and there and our two lines. Um, let's give this an angle of four degrees is what I used in the last one. And now we want to say coincident and put these points on that line. The circle on the outside. <clears throat> Lastly, I'm going to mirror this line around that line. So I haven't clicked anything yet. So it says select a mirror line. So that's the line I'm mirroring around. And this is what I want to mirror. So you can see it flipped it over to the other side. The last thing I want to do is I meant to do this at the beginning. I forgot to let me get out of the mirror tool. I want to turn that into a construction line. There you go. Sorry about that. Had a bit of a distraction there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the brake rotor oh there we go somehow i was on the surface we're going to remove and i need to pick that shape in there and you it, sometimes it's hard to pick when you have a section view going but you know just keep looking around or clicking around until you find it and this depth uh if you look at our drawing was 32 minus 14. So I'm going to type 32 minus 14 because it was seven on both sides and the total thickness was seven. And that's the depth that you want there. And I'm going to hit the green check here. And now that looks funny because I have my section view still turned on. So if I say turn off section view, now you can see that we have that slot going the whole way through. So now what do we do with this? We're going to circular pattern that. And it is just under the linear drop down, linear pattern drop down. So the most common mistake with circular pattern is forgetting to change to feature. That's typically what we're going to do. The feature that we're patterning is the extrude that we just made. The axis of pattern is any, you can pick any of these cylindrical surfaces or edges. Um, oops. Pick the wrong thing. I forgot to click in this box. Now I'm going to pick any of those edges. And you can see it gave me four of them. That's not at all what it looks like normally. Um, you can go ahead and count all those. That looks about right. Maybe there's a little bit more. Um, but let's just green check that. Um, and so now you can see that's how we got the circular pattern. So now the only thing we have left to do, I'll show you what it looks like on the finished one, is to create all these little pole, holes. In fact, let me see, what did I do for number of, oh, I did 30 of them. So let's change this to 30. I thought that looked like they were too, the material that was left behind was too thick. All right, that looks better. Okay, so now I'm going to tie on my views again, because over here we want to be able to make sense of these holes. Now, all of these are different holes. You can see the A, the hole is labeled A. There are five of them, and it's just a simple hole that is 15.5 millimeters uh, diameter and so on. So all of these, you have to keep in mind, you're going to pattern anything that's a repeat. So A is going to get patterned five times. B will just be two times. C will be two. And that's a little odd because it's not quite a circular. It's a circular pattern, but I'll explain that when we get there. And then D just doesn't have any 
Um, it's just one instance of it. So uh, let's quickly come onto this side and hit sketch. And instead of drawing all of those holes as through holes, we're going to just draw them as points. And then we're going to use the hole tool, it's called. So I can see that one hole, the C, is up here. A is directly below it down there. B is again right there. And then the only instance of D is right here. Now, I don't have any dimensions on here, so let's throw some dimensions on. This one is, gosh, I wish I would have. OK, so C is 136, as you can see right here. That's the diameter, so I'm going to say divided by 2 to get the radius. So it seems like those are somehow tied together, which I did not mean to have happen. Let's see if that holds true. This is 130 divided by 2. Oh, no, I guess not. Um, A is, where is A? Right here. One. That's also 130. And then B. You can just click, oh, make sure you get the angled dimension and not the vertical. D is at 140. The only thing that's not on here for D is the actual position of it. So I'm going to draw a construction line from that point to the origin and then back down to here so that I can dimension it from those two lines. And let's give it a 30 degree. OK, so now this sketch is fully constrained. You have your four points that represent the A, B, C, and D holes that are labeled on here. But right now, that all that means is that we have a sketch um, with points on it. So what I want you to do is use the hole tool. Uh, I believe it's under this. Where is it? Sorry, down here. And let's start with A, because that's an easy one. So A is right here. It's 15.5 through hole. So I'm going to say it's through. Um, and you can just make sure that your hole looks like this, your whole tool window. And you want to pick a hole. So there you go. Now, I'm going to rename this one A15.5. Just so that we can keep track, so that then when you go to pattern them, it's more obvious to you. Oh, and now we have to turn our sketch back on, so you can click the eyeball here. Because otherwise, our point, the sketch with all the points is gone. So, um, actually, let's do D next, since that's just a simple hole as well, since we already have it set to... Simple. I'm going to pick that one. And this is just uh, 11. And you can see that it's smaller and a little bit farther away, which looks right here. OK, hole tool. Now let's do B, which is a tapped hole, which means it's threaded for a screw to go into it. So what you can do here is you click ISO, which is the metric sizes, and it is an M8, which it says here. I know it's hard to read that, but let's just go with that. An M8. I'm going to pick that hole. And it's when it says through, that means it's going through the entire part, which is what we want. So I'm going to click check there. And then the last type of hole, which is the C hole, uh, is what's called a countersink, which means it's angled on the uh, top for a flathead screw to go through. So uh, we still want, oops, sorry, we still want it to be like that. Um, so let's see this, we are going to make it 6.4. And then oops, and this number, the 12.2 is the size across the top. So you can sort of see it from this picture. That's the hole size, and then this is the top hole. And the last thing to do is pick the point, and I'm going to green check that. So now you can see we have our four holes that are A, B, C, and D. The last thing is you need to circular pattern them again. So this, let's see, the A is there are five of them. So again, make sure you say feature pattern. 
Oh, and I forgot to name them all. So I know this is the a-hole. Uh, and I'm going to change the instant count to five. And the axis of pattern is just going to be any of these round features. And now you can see we have five of those holes labeled A. Um, which one was this? This should be D. Bit of an interesting order. Nothing alphabetical here. There we go. All right. And so you might be able to pause this video now and come do this on your own. Um, but if you don't feel like you're confident doing that, uh, just keep watching. So the feature that we're going to pattern here is B, uh, axis of pattern. Oops. You always have to remember to click in there. And now there are only two holes labeled B. So I'm just going to change this to two. And something went wrong, so let's go back in there. Oh, oops, I picked the wrong. Oh, I must have labeled the wrong. I want the tapped hole. Yep, I labeled them wrong. And now this is going to be C. And C is a little bit weird. Um, I hope you stuck with me to the end because this one you may not have figured out on your own. This one is going 90 plus 60, so 150 degrees. So rather than saying place two equally spaced across 360 degrees, which will give you them um, not at the right spacing, I'm going to say give me two at 150 degrees apart. And there you go. There was one there and there. And then D, obviously, we don't need to pattern because it there's only one of them. All right. Uh, so I think that's it. Let's see. Yep. Looks like we got it all. I would, oops, I would hide your plane so that you can see everything nicely. I'm going to turn off the sketch that I had turned on. And then this would be a great image to snip. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is if you want to give a uh, try to putting this array of holes in to your rotor, that would be pretty cool. And that is definitely extra credit worthy. Um, so you give that a try. If you notice, they are happening in between each leg of those inner um, patterns. And again, you would just create one and then you can circle the pattern around. Well, actually, you can create one hole pattern it in a different axis of rotation and then pattern it as well. So that would be two circular patterns. Um, so that's it. I hope this went well.